the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but do not ever quit. Success is a failure turned inside out. Let's talk and clear the clouds of doubt. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk. Today our topic is Eid in different times and places. I'm your host Khalil Amunet and I'm joined uh, in the studio by our guest Dr. Samir Ashaykh, professor at Al-Azhar University, uh, Department of Law. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we are also joined by our studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. And now I'm going to turn to Dr. Samir for a 10-minute reflection about Eid in different times and places. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. First of all, congratulations for the Eid of Al-Adha. And may Allah bless you all, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, actually, the, the word Eid is, is a special term in, in, in Islam. Uh, first of all, we say that every nation in history, uh, they uh, commemorate uh, some of its events and celebrate some of its um, uh, occasions. So this is, this is a subject of Al-Eid, or a holiday, or a festival. This is, this is a festival, and these days are uh, festive days in, in Islam. Uh, this is this is Ayyamul Eid, the days of uh, of uh, of Eid. Uh, well, actually, in Islam, we do have um, two main, um, uh, very uh, distinguished uh, days. That is Eid al Fitr and Eid al Adha. The first uh, Eid, this is Eid al Fitr. This is marking the end of the month of Ramadan. So after the month of Ramadan, uh, Muslims joy uh, the the breakfast and the joy that they 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 supposed of course that they uh, they have obeyed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all over the month and this is the reward they they now they break their fast and they wait for the reward of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the joy of that aid and the second one is the Eid, uh, Eid al-Adha. This is the Eid of sacrifice, the festival of uh, sacrifice. And in this uh, Eid, it, it actually, it, it, um, it is on the 10th of the month of Dhul-Hijjah. Um, and the first, the first Eid is three days, and second Eid is, is four days. Um, well, um, these two uh, kinds of festivals we have in Islam. Before Islam, the Prophet, when he first came in to Medina, and so that people in Medina, different people in Medina, celebrate some other sorts of Eid uh, or festival. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to them, to the Muslims, yes, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced these kinds of jahili or pre-Islamic period uh, replaced these uh, these uh, um, two days of Eid of Jahiliyyah with the two uh, days of Eid Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Actually, the uh, uh, these uh, these uh, festivals in Islam they uh, they acquire very very uh, much importance uh, in the life of the Muslims. And they uh, they have uh, through through the rites done, uh, they have a very deep impressions in the culture of the Muslim Ummah itself. Well, uh, well, the uh, in the Eid, whether it is Eid al Fitr or Eid al Adha, and everyone is distinguished with uh, so uh, so characteristics in it, but in general. We say that in these days of the festivals or, or ayad, we see that people, you know, all the year round, people are very busy, people are not humane, people are not um, 
uh, they don't have time to see anybody else. People are, uh, yes, yes, many, many things and many problems in an Eid. As a matter of fact, it is, it is, um, it is some time to stop and say, let us spiritually see what's around us. Let us see our families, our friends, um, our whole country, and celebrate the Eid as it should be. Uh, the Eid has many dimensions to, to explain, as a matter of fact. Uh, for example, it has a social, first of all, religious uh, dimension or aspect, and then social uh, uh, aspect, of course. Um, and um, according to the religious aspect, actually, uh, we see that people um, get into the obedience of Allah. You notice that in Islam, Eid comes, always Eid comes after a sort of worshipping, after some sort of rituals. In the first, Eid al-Fitr, it comes after the month of Ramadan, that is fasting, abstaining from eating, drinking, doing six, 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 sexual intercourse with the, uh, uh, the wife, and so on. Then you are free in the Eid. You are celebrating the Eid by breaking the fast and doing things that we are saying now. Now you have to pay attention to charity in the Eid. Now everybody is celebrating, so uh, how about, uh, how about uh, um, the, 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 aspect or the aspect of spiritual uh, dimension of the Eid? Uh, we say that people are waiting for the reward of Allah. Uh, people are waiting for the blessing of Allah. You are spiritually in an atmosphere that is, uh, all of it is harmony, all of it is uh, uh, good wishes, all of it is brotherhood and sisterhood, all of it is something that is spiritual. Now you are cutting yourself of the clutches, you know, uh, clutches of the attachment of this world, and uh, think and behave in the Eid uh, in, a, in a very different way. Uh, religiously, so this is, this is, this is a point. Uh, and socially, of course, now we find people come to see each other. Families reunite. Um, uh, people meet each other, smile to each other respectfully, lo lovingly, uh, and uh, elder people, they are respected. Um, and how about uh, the children? This is, this is a long story for the children in Eid, actually, because they prepare for that Eid uh, uh, days before it, prepare everything, as if the world has stopped to, to, to being in Eid and has stopped to be only Eid. Uh, these, these, the, um, the children... Uh, t taking taking money, having um, new garments and the clothes, and um, uh, very very naive and simple joy. You know the, the the naive joy. This is this is the joy of the children in in the Eid, and actually it is it is uh, it is the same joy of any Muslim. Naive joy, that is, purifying himself after the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after being obedient to Allah so we are waiting for the blessings we are waiting for the reward uh, families uh, unite reunite again and even the families th those those um, uh, members of the families that are divided because of uh, they, they work in, in different towns they come together eat together um, spend time together even even if if it is only a few days but it still is a very uh, fantastic time to be spent uh, this is this is it so spiritually and socially uh, Aid has its um, uh, its main characteristics uh, well from the cultural point of view I think that every as every nation has its own culture 
and its own uh, traditions. Uh, the same applies to Muslims. They have their own traditions and the customs in Eid, either in the, in the way of preparing a special type of food or in the way of wearing clothes and having the best types of, uh, uh, of perfumes and so on and so forth. Uh, this is it. So Muslims, like any other nation, they have their, their own traditions. But the most important thing is that what we gain from the Eid, we gain spiritual gains, we gain um, social gains, uh, the community is, all of it, is in, a, in an atmosphere of cooperation, atmosphere of, uh, uh, of loving each other. So you find that brotherhood and sisterhood who live all over the, uh, uh, the Muslim world. Um, uh, actually, this is a brief idea how uh, Eid represents in the, in, the, in the life of the Muslim Ummah. But uh, before I forget, I, I just uh, um, refer to some, uh, something uh, concerning the definition of the Eid. When, when, when somebody asks what the word Eid, it comes from what? Actually, it comes from uh, the, uh, the derivative Eid, you Eid. It's it, it repeat, repeating or the anniversary. You know, something to be repeated every year. So, Eid from Yu'id, that is to repeat something. So, uh, now we are in Eid, so this is, this is the repetition of the day that we celebrated last, last year. So, this is, this is the word uh, Eid. Um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Muslim Ummah to have these two kinds of Eid. Uh, each one has its own characteristics and its own joy. Uh, the first one, that is Eid uh, al-Fitr, that is breaking the fast, and it has its own time and the characteristics. Um, and in Eid al-Adha, this is this is named after the sacrifice. I mean, I mean the sacrifice that we we uh, we render, to, we offer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, getting ourselves involved in spiritual atmosphere in obedience to Allah. So you sacrifice uh, something uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being in the, in, the, uh, in, the, um, in the ritual places in, 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 um, in Mecca and, and Medina or even in, in other countries, you feel when you are not performing Hajj, but you, are, you, you feel the same spiritual atmosphere uh, when you are in your uh, town in your country and you are participating with the w with the pilgrims yes in their sacrifice so you sacrifice yourself in your town in your country and you abstain from cutting cut, cutting your nails or cutting your hair just for 10 days if you want or you intended to uh, to sacrifice. This okay. is participating in that. Okay. Yeah. So, so this, this is it. Thank you for those beautiful words and I think we're going to take a break. Please uh, don't go anywhere. We are covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness.
Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for staying with us. Today's topic is Eid in different times and places. And I think we have some Vox Pops we'd like to show. So please stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Where are you from and Eid greetings you would like to give family and friends? My name is uh, Yahya. I'm from, originally from Jordan, but I live in London. I would like to greet my family in Jordan and uh, the United Arab Emirates for Eid. And uh, I say ho hi to everyone and I love you all. Uh, my name is uh, Fawaz Abustane. I'm from Jordan. I'm here on holiday. I would like to uh, wish Happy Eid to uh, my brother here in London and my parents in Jordan and my family in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Well, that was interesting. Uh, I have a question for you, Dr. Samir. How did the Prophet and his companions celebrate Eid? Yes, um, there is a main characteristic in both Eids of, uh, of Islam. Uh, that was uh, the application of the Sunnah in it. That is uh, uh, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. It means that Allah is the greatest. Uh, praise be to Allah. And this is actually the, uh, the common characteristic in, 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 in Eid in Islam. Yes. That is glorifying Allah, praising Allah. Thanking Allah for the reward that we have got after after a worshiping uh, period and so on. Now, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to celebrate the Eid just as any Muslim. For example, Eid al-Fitr, he focused before he, he gets out to perform the Salah of Eid. Uh, he would have something sweet. That is, that is to eat something is sweet to confirm that we are not no, any more fasting. We are not any more fasting. Uh, this is it. But in Eid al-Adha, he uh, used to be the first thing to eat at, at that day uh, is, the, uh, uh, is the sacrifice. The, uh, the slaughtered animal uh, be cooked and he, he, he eats from it after um, distributing uh, to the needy and the poor people and um, and for friends and relatives. Um, uh, this is it. Uh, also, uh, the Eid, the Takbir in Eid, uh, saying um, Allah is the greatest. Uh, in Eid al-Fitr, it starts with the, uh, uh, after the dawn of that day, and then it continues the same day, but until the, the imam uh, uh, ascends, the imam ascends the pulpit to give his sermon. Uh, but in the, in, the, in the other Eid, that is the Eid of sacrifice, takbir and the tahleel continues uh, from, uh, that's the, that the, uh, from the day of Arafah, that's a day before the Eid itself, uh, until four days after Arafah, that is the, the first day of Eid, second, third, and the fourth. Uh, tahleel and takbir, glorifying Allah, um, uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. This is the main characteristic, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used, as should be um, understood uh, uh, um, religiously, that everything... Um, uh, uh, leads to the, uh, the, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be done. That is, for example, to visit the, the, the great family. Yes. Uh, for example, to see and meet their relatives. Uh, to smile at them, shake hands and even embrace. Um, congratulate the, uh, the, um, the, um, the friends and relatives. Uh, and the uh, the uh, elderly people, uh, they are respected. More respect is given to them at, at, uh, in these days, uh, and and they are uh, treated mercifully and kindly. Uh, also, if um, if we have somebody falling out with another, we should bring them together and. Uh, 
And time for reconciliation. He, yes, reconcile between them and so on and so forth. Every uh, deed that is a good deed should be done at that day. Um, well, this is uh, the the prophet personally has no time actually to any uh, personal pleasure. Okay. Uh, so he spent his his time, his, uh, the whole of his life, uh, preaching uh, Muslims, uh, educating Muslims, uh, saying the the the, the rulings or, or announcing something concerning the Islamic Sharia and so on and so forth. But ordinary Muslims, they celebrate their Eid uh, in their in their own way. That is a way which doesn't contradict with the main principles of Islamic Sharia. Uh, I think that uh, certain types of food are, are had in, 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 in this occasion, yes. in Eid al-Fitr or in Eid al-Adha. Yes, of course, in Eid al-Adha, people used to eat the, the, the meat of their sacrifices or the meat that's, that is presented to them by other relatives right. or other friends. Um, uh, in Eid al-Fitr, of course, they the Muslims used to, to do something uh, else. The uh, this is this is the ten the last ten days of Ramadan that is called kak, some some something baked of flour and uh, and and uh, like cream cake and so. yes cakes and so on. Uh, this is it. Um, okay. Uh, and and this this is this is the way Muslims celebrate um, uh, something uh, relating to the uh, to the um, uh, appearances. Uh, Muslims try to wear the uh, new uh, new clothes or new new suits, and new garments yes. uh, to meet the others. Thank you for that beautiful answer. And now we're going to turn to our studio audience. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, right here. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question is about like decorating the houses on Yom al-Eid, on the day of Eid. Like in Canada, people they put like lights up on the day of Eid. So is this allowed, or is there another way that you can get your house ready for Eid? Yeah, Islamically, we say yes, you can do that. But still, you should be in the boundaries of not to be extravagant. Uh, they, you spend some uh, some money to decorate your house uh, for nothing. I mean, I mean, decorate your house, yes, in 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 a in a, in a, in a fair way. Uh, and if you have a surplus money uh, left, you can give as charity to those needy people because this is this is a very very characteristic in the, in the Eid. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 people the Muslim people used to give charity to the needy and to the poor. That is because the Prophet peace be upon him recommended that, and he said, just make them do without begging people. Stop picking people at that day, so give charity or give the cattle fit to prevent uh, people from begging others. So, if you have a surplus money, so you can give as a charity. But within the boundaries of fairness, you know, you, 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 can, you can do that. You have lights, you can decorate your house, you can do everything uh, but to be fair. This is it. Yeah, like in the U.S., for example, during Christmas time, they usually decorate their homes with, you know, very extremely extravagant uh, lights, and it actually consumes a lot of electricity, and it's uh, very costly to to uh, the environment also. So, yeah, I think it's uh, very important that uh, we remember the poor, and if we have some extra money, instead of spending it on uh, extra just extravagant uh, luxury, you know. Yes. Uh, we should spend it on the poor. Yes. Uh, do we have any other questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sheikh, you just mentioned something about uh, when the Prophet uh, first arrived at Medina and found people uh, celebrating two days, and he told them that Allah has replaced these two days for you with the two days of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Yes. Now we have many events on the Muslim calendar, like uh, the night of Isra and Wal Mi'raj, uh, like the the day of the the first day of the Prophet, and we have some other events like which are not on the Muslim uh, calendar, like the New Year Eve, 
like the Easter and Halloween. So the question is, what's the Islam stance regarding celebrating these yes. events? Good. Actually, we don't call anything Eid except these two days, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And we are allowed to, ple to please each other, to joy, to have joy, to have pleasure and everything uh, within these two days. The other days you, you've just mentioned, these are days. So you are a day of something, day of something. Yawm al-Um, Yawm al-Muharib. Uh, so, so, so every every occasion that we wa we want to focus on, uh, we can say or give it a name. But it is a day, not Eid. Why is that? Uh, the the lesson behind that, or the, the the benefit from that, is to have admonish, to to focus on what should happen by. Uh, having a day for the mother, for example, or having a day for the um, uh, the old um, uh, warriors, or, or or something like that. So you just take the lesson, and you are not in a vacation anyway. In Eid, you are in a vacation. Everything stops, and you are celebrating the Eid. And we we explained uh, what aspects are there within the Eid itself, that is um, a spiritual, social, and so on, uh, a ce celebration. But these days, we cannot call them Eid, we call them occasions. So in, in these occasions, we just take the lessons, admonish, we, um, we know um, uh, may be helpful to, uh, to uh, some classes of the community to do something, to proceed in something, and so on and so forth, but they are not Eid. Okay, thank you for that answer, and I think we're going to take a short break right now. Please stay with us. Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers, that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. This is knowledge that we need to learn. That's why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, thank you for staying with us. We are joined now by a new guest, Abdullah bin Sadliq. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Abdullah is a professor at Antiqua University, a uh, professor of comparative uh, religion in Colombia. So my question for you is, uh, how do you guys celebrate uh, Eid in Colombia? In Colombia and all over Latin America, yes. Muslims are a little minori minority. Uh, we are... In all these uh, countries, like Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, less than 1% of the whole community, of the One whole population, yes. 1%. Mm -hmm. So we have many difficulties, but okay. those days are the best days of, uh, in the beginning of our lives, because yes. many of us are revered to Islam. Yeah. So the first uh, Eid, uh, the, uh, in the Ram after Ramadan, and after uh, in the Hajj, are for us like a uh, renovation of our faith. For example, uh, in the Eid, you can find in, in, the, in our mosques yeah. people from our countries who reverted to Islam Marshall. and people from all over the world. Yes. For example, in my city, you can find people of 50 countries in the same place. In my city, you only find that in the hotels, but also in the mosques. And for us, uh, this multi multicultural a meeting, this uh, multi-language meeting uh, is amazing in the so beginning. So Eid gathers the Muslims in Colombia and unites them. 
Muslims from all over South uh, America. And from all or, or, or from other cities uh, and countries like Lebanon, like uh, Palestine, yeah. like Pakistan, even Iran, even uh, Spain, uh, United States. Absolutely. So for us, uh, listen many languages like Spanish, English, Arabic, Urdu, Turkish at the same time. Uh, make things as which kind of religion I am living in. Which kind of religion can unite people? Uh, when you see in the news uh, uh, the religions, uh, it said on the news, uh, disunite and make wars. No, for us, for new Muslims, uh, get us uh, a strength, get us a feeling that God created us all uh, in the same way and for the same purpose, Ibadah, <laughs> for the worshipping. Very interesting. Uh, so now I think this we're is going actually a very important point in, yes. in Islamic uh, uh, festivals that uh, Eid is uniting people from different uh, nationalities and cultures. Uh, you see, feel that you 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 are the brother. You have the brotherhood and sisterhood all over the world. And in one place, as our brother said, uh, you have many nationalities, but they are unified in only one thing. That is celebrating Eid, and that is submitting to Allah in that celebration of Eid. Yes, like in the U.S., uh, in our mosque, for example, we have many masajid, and uh, they're all not very big. So during Eid, we rent uh, one large complex, and you see all of the Muslims from Richmond, which is uh, about uh, close to 10,000 people all gathering in one place, and uh, celebrating and meeting each other. So it's a good time to meet people and uh, to congratulate them on Eid. Uh, so I think uh, we're going to take a question from our audience. Uh, go ahead, I, I've got a question. Sure. Um, in these days, we, we need to have fun and go out. But uh, unfortunately, um, these days we face uh, some sense. What should we do in these days? Go out or stay at home? Uh, what, what do you mean by things when you go out? You mean, you mean? Yes, yes. Well, the Muslim is very wise. The Muslim is asked to uh, to refresh himself and to enjoy pleasure. And that is specifically in that Eid. But this this is we 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 mean the naive and simple pleasure, not a prohibited one. I'm saying that because in Eid, people, Muslims, many Muslims, used to do prohibited things. Uh, used to go to nightclubs, celebrate in, in many uh, unlawful places, and so on and so forth. This is not Islam. Uh, but if you are just comparing between, between going out and, and celebrating naive and simple uh, pleasure, uh, it, it, yes, it is okay. And, and, and staying at home, I, I, I say to you, well, you are asked to go out and visit relatives, see your uh, friends, um, uh, give much respect, more respect to elders, uh, have pleasure with the, with the children and so on and so forth. But actually, when you ask uh, about myself, well, I am I'm sorry... Sometimes, in, in many times, I can't in, can't find the time to do that. But I am, I'm saying I'm saying to all, to all people, you should enjoy the Eid. This is this is um, you know a, a, a respite. You, you know the the word respite. This is to stop every every business, to stop everything that is um, taking you uh, from uh, from your. Uh, from your family, from your society, and start to, to, to do something for that. Uh, but um, retreating or, or, uh, or keeping at home, even for, for, for some, something lawful, that is studying, reading, writing, reciting Quran, and so on and so forth, we say it is not the time. It is not actually the time. But if he, if he did that, it is not prohibited, uh, but the, the, it is preferred that you go out.
to go out, celebrate, to yes. visit family, yes. Yes, spend time with your children. Yes, of course. If, uh, we have we have we have rulings in Islam, something obligatory, something uh, recommended or permissible, reprehensible or disliked, and haram. Uh, if you stay at home, uh, it is not obligatory upon you to stay at home, and it is not prohibited upon you to stay at home. Uh, it is recommended to go out. Uh, you see, you see that uh, it may be permissible for you to stay at home, uh, especially if you're doing something which is um, uh, uh, something which is very important in your study, in your um, writing and reading, in your. Uh, this is it. Uh, but but we we say that um, Muslim is wise and he he should have uh, he should participate with the others in celebrating Daid. Okay, uh, Abdullah. Um, Muslims in Colombia do they have an easy time dealing with things like work uh, uh, during your Eid? Can they is, do they have an easy time to get off and to go enjoy Eid? This is one of the big problems we have. Big problems we have there, because all the holidays in our countries are for political reasons, yeah. religion reasons, but from the Christians, and they have a lot of holidays. Yes. Sometimes in my country they have uh, more than 15 holidays wow. in the year. <laughs> uh, 15 days that the Christian doesn't work, but the Muslim we only have two days. Yeah. Uh, but we are. We are a, a small minority, and many people, uh, many workers, doesn't know about Islam, nothing yeah. about Islam. So it's a problem to uh, have the time to go to the mosque. Yes. But it's also a very good thing to let know people about Islam. Yes. And that's the most important thing. And you yeah. do that in the Eid? Of course. Yes. Of yes. course. In these two days, uh, the newspapers, the radio stations, even the TV go to the mosques. Yes. Because this is the only two occasions in the years that, that Muslims are in the spotlight, and uh, in a good way. Yes, in a good way. All the time, you know, bad uh, news about uh, about us, about uh, all the wor uh, most Islamic world. But in those two days, uh, the news go the, to the mosque, and especially the new Muslims, we take our families, yes. our friends, our uh, workers, our our students to the mosque, to uh, listen the history of Ibrahim, for example, in the, in the, right. uh, for the Hajj. And they say, Ibrahim, you believe in Ibrahim? But he's in our religion. And they find the common aspects of... Exactly. And, and that and Muslims actually celebrate. Exactly. So uh, it's a very good thing for Dawah. And also in Ramadan, we take the, the people there, not only in the Eid, but even in Ramadan, when we breakfast, uh, so we can explain to, the, to them how and why we make things. Yes. So many of them like them, and some of them uh, revert to Islam. For example, I hear from a good uh, brother, and a good uh, friend of mine, who make a khutbah yes. in the Spanish language about Ibrahim. Yes. And there was a guy uh, who was uh, 70 years old, and he converted in that it because of the Just khutbah. By hearing the khutbah. Yes, exactly. Very good. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, they, they focus actually on the uh, spiritual uh, side of, of, uh, of the Eid. Oh, very good. And it, they take the opportunity because they are my minority. Uh, they take the opportunity to, uh, uh, to propagate Islam for non-Muslims and to convey Islam to even Muslims. Exactly. But they don't have the time to learn it. Yes. Good. And there is another important thing. For example, uh, many people get amazing, amazed about these two days because it's a party, it's a yes. festival. You have, you Muslim, have a party, have party. without alcohol, You're without not music, angry. Yes. without dancing. How is that? <laughs> Which kind of religion tells you that a party, a festival, doesn't have those kind of things? Let me go there. Some, of pe some people go there and they love because they see that they can enjoy our time with other people, with many kind of people, in a safe place, in a good way, without this kind of stuff. Without dancing and partying and drinking. Exactly. Okay, I think we're going to go to our audience and see if we have any questions. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, ask Dr. Samir about um, the, the days before Eid al-Adha, the Eid of Sacrifice, 
um, what is the, the significance of these days and what is the best way the Muslim can spend these days on the things that the Muslim can do in, in these days? Well, actually, the significance of these days before the Eid uh, um, comes from, uh, from the uh, uh, rites that, uh, that are done and performed in, the, uh, in Mecca and the Medina, that is the places, the holy places of Hajj. So, um, you know that the, the, the idea of, the, of Eid al-Adha itself, it came to com commemorate the uh, the uh, what uh, uh, the prophet Ibrahim uh, uh, did when he was asked to sacrifice his uh, his son Ismail, uh, and uh, actually we have to memorize that we have to um, uh, live in the ideas and in the lessons of that. Uh, now he was asked to sacrifice his uh, his son, his only son, and uh, and uh, he, he he got that son after 70 years of age or, a, or even 80. So this is, this is something, how to show the obedience and submission to Allah. This is the very occasion of Eid, uh, of sacrifice. So before the Eid, we, we still remember what, what were the stages that, uh, that are there to come to the, the celebration of the Eid. When, when, when Prophet Abraham got the order of Allah, and uh, that was a um, uh, an, an, uh, night uh, vision, uh, a dream, when he got the, uh, the order of Allah to, 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 slaughter, to, to uh, slaughter his son, you know, and he is he, submitting, he just uh, waited or hesitated some, some way. Uh, but the second day, he saw the same dream, the same my, uh, night vision. Uh, so he he was he's assured, and he know that the uh, the uh, the dream or the night vision of the prophets um, is um, is something t true. They should they should apply on that. Then and and after the third time, is no way of denying that, because Satan came to Abraham. And said, "Oh, you, you will slaughter your your only son, uh, and, and this is what what is that? Uh, that that is disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." Okay. But but Abraham, just a, a, a minute. Abraham just um, throw him by with bepels, and th these are the bepels that we throw on these on these stands, or the uh, Aqaba, Ula, and, uh, Sora, Bosta, and the Kobra, and so on. So these events or incidents that uh, that happened to Abraham are re are recorded, and we are uh, um, uh, observing that, memorize that, and act on that. Okay, thank you for that beautiful answer. And now we're going to take a short break. Please don't go away. the second rule of al mim as sakina that is the letter mim so if the first mim is non vowel or sakina followed by a voweled mim so i will merge the first in the letter and i will pronounce them as one wa amanahum min and we spoke abundantly on the virtues of seek refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan, especially for the first reciter, he's got to recite it out loud. Make sure it's Dhamma. Thank you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for staying with us. 
Uh, we were discussing Eid in different times and cultures. Uh, Islam is everywhere, South America, uh, Africa, Asia, North America, Europe. They're different cultures. Uh, how, what are the, how do we celebrate? Uh, with, uh, can we mix culture and religion when we celebrate? Well, as a matter of fact, we have Islam as a comprehensive religion. It is a religion that suits every time and place, yes. every people and every time. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's um, no blame upon you to have your own tradition as a, a specific country, a specific civilization, a specific uh, custom. No blame on you to mingle or to mix between your traditions and the rituals of Islam on condition that there is no contradiction between uh, practicing the, uh, these customs and traditions yes. and the rituals of Islam. So uh, we say that uh, committing, uh, committing zina, for example, yes. or unlawful re sexual relationships uh, between people to be done in the Eid and saying this is tradition, we know, we, we reject that, uh, do, do everything where, um, uh, as long as it is prohibited and per, uh, uh, as long as it is not prohibited and, and it is permissible by the Islamic Sharia. Everything is, is allowed to you. And there is a very important rule in Islam that, uh, that is that's addressing all people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created to us all in the earth, all in the earth and the heaven. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala submitted that to us. So uh, we, can, we can enjoy it. We can benefit from it on condition that we shouldn't commit anything that is against the Islamic Sharia. So traditions, customs, oh yes. They're we, great. We, yes. As long as they don't we, 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 uh, we in, Yes, in we Islam. admit we acknowledge that within the framework of this comprehensive Sharia. And without that, without admitting that, uh, Islam wouldn't be a comprehensive religion. Yes. So we have some traditions of the people in, in, in Latin America or some people in Russia, Muslims in Russia or in Asia and so on and so forth. They are practicing their, their good and lawful traditions, no blame on them, and this is accepted by Islam. Okay, I think we're going to go for another question from the audience. Does anyone have a question? Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Um, Sheikh, um, what should we do with the, the slaughtered meat, the slaughtered animal's meat? Yes. Wh wh which? What, what, what should, should we, do? we do with... Oh the yes, yes. Okay. Slot slaughtering the uh, what? What you should you do with that after after slaughtering the animal and then you have the meat of it? Well, actually, the uh, the jurists say that it is traditionally uh, divided into three parts. Uh, one part is to be presented to relatives and friends and neighbors, uh, and the the other part to go to the uh, needy people and the poor people, uh, of course, as a charity. And the, the third one is to be kept at home for your household, I mean for the members of you or your family. Uh, actually, this, this division is not, um, it's not so specific that you should abide by, uh, but it is because the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said after slaughtering then, uh, uh, he said you can give a charity, uh, give presents, and feed your, your, your family. But to be one third or one half or so, he didn't. He didn't uh, 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 determine what. In 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 some cases and sometimes, your household, your your uh, your sons and daughters may uh, your children may may need uh, more than one third. So why not keep half, and then the other half have to be divided between uh, relatives uh, as pres presents and your friends and that charity for the needy people. And some other times, uh, you might find some needy people, many, and they need that. So, you may keep for your family a little of it, of that meat, and give most of the sl uh, slaughtered animal, or the meat you have, to be a charity. And so on and so forth. 
the it depends on the time, circumstances, and the and the ev everything of that. Thank you so very much it. for that beautiful mm -hmm. answer. Uh, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you, Dr. Samir. Thank you. And thank okay. you, Abdullah. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all the time we've had. I'd like to say Eid Mubarak to the Muslims around the world. And tune in next time for another episode of Let's Talk. <laughs>